Hi, this is the Science Chef. It's great to be with you today. Thank you for all your support in helping us hit the 500 subscribers milestone. We actually wanted to use this video to launch our picture in picture recording. But based on the poll we conducted, majority of you said you're okay with our current format of recording. So having said enough, today we'll be learning about the second law of electrolysis, which is the sequel to our last tutorial, Faraday's first law of electrolysis. If you're yet to watch that video, you have added the link in the description. So go nowhere, I will be right back after this break. Welcome back. Faraday's second law of electrolysis states that when the same quantity of electricity is passed through two or more different electrolytes connected in series, the number of moles of the elements deposited at the electrodes is inversely proportional to the charges on their ions. Mathematically, I express this law as n inversely proportional to q, where n is the number of moles of elements deposited and q is the charge on their ions. We can illustrate the Faraday's second law by using two electrolytic cells connected in series, with one containing copper 2 sulfate solution and the other containing silver nitrate solution as shown on the screen. When the circuit is closed and the same amount of current I is made to flow through both cells after a specified time T, it will be observed that the number of moles of silver deposited at the cathode of the cell containing the silver nitrate solution will be twice that of copper deposited at the cathode of the cell containing the copper 2 sulfate solution which are inversely proportional to their charges. For instance, to deposit one mole of copper, we will need two Faradays because copper is a divalent cation. And to deposit one mole of silver, one Faraday will be required because silver is a univalent cation. So if two Faradays of electricity is passed through the two cells, then one mole of copper will be deposited in the copper 2 sulfate voltameter while two moles of silver will be deposited in the silver nitrate voltameter. Now, let's look at some examples on the Faraday's second law of electrolysis. Example 1. A given quantity of electricity liberated 6.02 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 moles of copper from a copper 2 sulfate solution. What mass in grams of aluminium will be deposited from a suitable aluminium compound? using the same quantity of electricity. Take the relative atomic masses of copper and aluminium to be 63.5 and 27 respectively and 96,500 coulombs per mole as the value of the Faraday's constant. Since the same quantity of electricity was passed through two different electrolytes, it means that they were connected in series, which makes it an application of the second law we are given the number of moles of copper deposited and asked to determine the mass of aluminium that will be deposited by the same quantity of electricity. So, write the reduction half equations for both copper 2 ions and aluminium ions. Then, using mole ratio, we will determine the quantity of electricity that was used to deposit the mole of copper. After which, we will use that same quantity of electricity to calculate the mass of aluminum that will be deposited using mole concept from the reduction half equation of copper two faradays will be required to deposit one mole of copper two faradays will deposit one mole of copper. Therefore, for 0.0602 moles of copper to be deposited, and that will give us 0.1. 204 Faradays. 
This gives us the quantity of electricity that was passed through the two electrolytic cells. It is what will be used to determine the mass of the aluminium metal that will be deposited. So from the reduction half equation for aluminium, 3 Faradays will deposit one mole of aluminium. Remember the mass of one mole of aluminium is 27 grams. This means that 3 Faradays will deposit 27 grams of aluminium. Therefore, 0 0.1204 Faradays will deposit X. That gives us 1.08 grams of aluminium. Alternatively, you can use a formula M over AR equals to Q over NF, linking all the parameters for copper to solve. Bear in mind that M over AR is equivalent to the number of moles of the elements deposited. Then make Q the subject of formula. Substitute this formula into the formula linking all the parameters of aluminium together and solve for the mass of aluminium that will be deposited like this. Next is example 2. A direct current of 0.5 amperes flows for 15 minutes through 3 voltmeters connected in series. The cells contain solutions of silver nitrate, copper 2 sulfate, and brine respectively. Calculate the A masses of silver and copper metals deposited, B volume of chlorine gas that will be liberated at 65 degrees Celsius and 2 atmospheric pressure. Take the relative atomic masses of silver and copper to be 108 and 63.5 respectively. Molar gas volume at STP as 22.4 dm cube and Faraday's constant as 96500 coulombs per mole. In this question, we we'll first calculate the quantity of electricity that was passed through the three voltmeters using the parameters provided. Then use that value to determine the masses of silver and copper metals deposited through mole concepts. After that, we will still apply the same mole concept to calculate the volume of chlorine gas that was liberated at STP. And then use the general gas equation to determine the volume of chlorine gas that would be liberated at the given conditions. For the parameter provided, the current that flows through the three voltmeters is 0.5 amperes. The time of current flow is 50 minutes. So we convert that to seconds. Then 
Therefore, the quantity of electricity that passed through the three voltameters will be the product of the current and watt time, which is 0 0.5 times 3000. That gives us 1500 coulombs. From the reduction of equation for silver iron, one for a day, you'll deposit one mole of silver. By one Faraday is 96,500 coulombs, while one mole of silver is 108 grams. Remember, we are told to calculate the masses of silver and copper metals deposited. So this means that one times 96,500 coulombs will deposit 108 grams of silver. So 1,500 coulombs will deposit In the copper two sulfate voltameter, two Faradays will deposit one mole of copper. And remember, a Faraday is 96,500 coulombs, while one mole of copper weighs 63.5 grams. So this means that two times 96. 500 coulombs will deposit 63.5 grams of copper. Therefore, 1500 coulombs will deposit. In the concentrated sodium chloride voltameter, two Faradays are required. Two Faradays are required to liberate one mole of chlorine. Recall that one mole of the gas at STP occupies 22.4 TMQ. This means that 2 times 96,500 coulombs will be required to liberate 22.4 dm cube of chlorine. Therefore, 1,500 coulombs will be required to deposit. That gives us 0 0.174 dm cube of chlorine liberated at STP. So to determine the volume of chlorine that will be liberated at 65 degrees Celsius, so at 65 degrees Celsius and 2 atm pressure, we will make use of the general gas equation. P1 V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2.
So, from the general gas equation, if we make V2 subject of formula, I will P1, V1, T2, all over P2, T1, then substitute the values 1 times 0 0.174 times 338 divided by 2 times 273. That gives us approximately 0 0.108 dm cube of chlorine, which means that 0 0.108 dm cube of chlorine will be liberated in the sodium chloride cell or brine cell at 65 degrees Celsius and 2 atm. To learn more about the general gas equation and the gas laws in general, check the link in the description. In our next tutorial, we'll be learning about a concept we just applied in this topic and a very interesting topic in chemistry called the mole concept. If you'd like to know when the video will be published, simply subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Keep winning till I see you when I'll see you.